Hi there, everyone. My name is Prerag Jathani. I'm an intern here at Stanford's Internal Medicine Program. I'm also an MD MBA from Yale's MD MBA program. And today I want to walk you through the exact things to, uh, to basically expect when you walk into your USMLE Step 3. Um, and the reason I want to do this is because test day is just so drastically different from whatever it is you probably practice on that it's important for this video to be made. I did a similar one for USMLE Step 1 and Step 2 and people appreciated that because as I said, test day can be so different. And so I'm going to walk you through exactly what to expect on test day because it will be very different and also going to give you some personal tips that change the game for me on test day. And I think if you didn't do these things, it could actually drastically change your score, not because you don't know what you're doing, but because you're not controlling the variables that are within your control on test day. So with that being said, step two is a two day exam. The first day is 232 uh, multiple choice questions, six blocks. Each block is one hour for 40 questions about, and that means you should be doing one question every 90 minutes. Um, and then the second day I'm going to talk about, but just remember that first day you're going to get 45 minutes of break time for that six hours. And what that means is the moment you click start on your test, the clock is going to start cutting down, counting down from six hours and 45 minutes. And then when you finish a block, it's just going to keep counting down. And then when you finish a block, it's going to keep counting down. So technically if you finish a block early, that block will be added on to your break time. Um, similarly, there's also a five minute tutorial, which usually if you've done enough of the USMLE things, you won't need to go through the tutorial extensively. That five minutes, if you finish that tutorial early, will be added on to your break time, which is great. But just remember that it is a running clock. So the moment you click start on that test, six hours and 45 to 50 minutes later, the test will end whether you like it or not, unfortunately. So that's the first day. That 45 minutes is supposed to give you enough break to eat food and get a lunch and whatnot. The second day is actually the craziest. The second day is, I think, longer than step 2CK because it's technically nine hours long. It's because the second day will start with the multiple choice question. There's six blocks of multiple choice. But now, instead of each block being one hour, each block is 45 minutes and there's 30 questions. So six times 45 minutes is the multiple choice. And then after that, you have a seven minute tutorial for the CCS block. And then you have 13 CCS cases, which are simulations. And there's an entire video I've made about CCS, and I'm also going to walk through a CCS case. But that's, that's not the point of this video, so I'm going to defer it. But just know that on the second day, you're not just doing five hours of multiple choice questions. You're also going to be doing another four hours of cases after that. The good part on the second day is that you still only have 45 minutes of break time. But, but, and this is very important to remember, there are CCS cases. Those cases are between 10 and 20 minutes. And usually you will end some of those cases early because you won't have an option. The case usually ends if you reach a diagnosis or if you reach a place where there's no other simulation that's possible. And when it ends, let's say it's a 20 minute case. If you finished in 14 minutes, the six minutes that you have left over will get added on to your break time. And so the good part about the second day is that you technically do start getting more and more break time as you near the end of the test because the simulation will slowly start running out of options and you will have to end some cases early. So with that being said, just remember two days, 45 minutes of break on each one. The first day is six hours total of testing time and then 45 minute break. The second day is around like eight hours of testing time, 45 minute break, but you'll get more time added on as you finish some of those cases early. If you don't finish those cases early, you will not get extra break time. So now I'm going to go into a few tips on what to expect, as well as things that totally changed the game for me. And I think this might be second nature to many of you if you've already taken a lot of USMLE tests, but just kind of bear with me because this definitely changed the game for my end. The first one is to bring snacks, bring a lot of snacks, bring glucose and bring caffeine if you drink coffee regularly, because I can't tell you, I think you, I hit a hump around noon. And by having glucose ready, I was able to kind of get over that hump of feeling totally groggy and out of it. And I also had some caffeine ready to go. Um, the other thing is on the first day, just remember that when you, you, some people will like to do sections back to back, which is fine. But just remember that when you click start on a section, you're going to lock yourself in for at least another hour on the first day. And that's problematic because you may not be hungry or you may not need to use the bathroom right now, but at least in an hour, you might need to. 
And I've had that happen to me where I start a section thinking I feel good and then 35 minutes in, I realize I need to use the bathroom. So from my perspective, I always take a break in between every section just to like empty my bladder, get some water and maybe get a bit of sugar or caffeine. But if you don't do that, just remember you're locking yourself in for another hour. And at that point, if you wanted to leave the testing room, you're losing valuable testing time that you should be using to answer questions. The second tip that I have for you is I studied for step three by doing a lot of questions on tutor mode. So I wasn't doing many questions um, on a timed basis. But if you wanna do well on this test, you will have to be doing a lot of mental math. So just remember that when you're halfway through a block, what that means is when when I was about 19 questions in, I expected myself to be at least 30 minutes, have at least 30 minutes left. If I had less than 30 minutes left, I knew that I wasn't going fast enough, so I would actually pick up the pace. And I would try to finish at least three to four minutes early just to make sure I could ensure I had everything done and answered everything I could answer. Um, but by doing that mental math in my head, I was able to stay ahead of the clock. The last thing you wanna do is leave any question blank because there's no guessing penalty on the USMLE and every question is worth exactly the same amount. So a question that you have zero clue about is worth the exact same amount as a question that you're 100% sure of. And that question that you're 100% sure of might show up at the end of the block. So you are doing yourself a disservice by not trying to get through every question. So if you don't get something, move on, especially if you don't get it within two minutes because that's on the upper limit of how much time you should be spending on each question. The next thing is these two tips, uh, quite important. Make sure you calculate the time that it takes to get back into the testing room, into your break time. Whenever you enter a ProMetric testing room, you will have to open up all your pockets. You're gonna to have to take your glasses off. You're gonna to have to let them inspect your glasses. You actually have to also take off your mask, show them the inside of your mask. And if you have a jacket on, you are allowed a jacket in the testing room room, you will have to open up the jacket and show them the pockets of the jacket. And so all that to say, if someone is in line ahead of you to get back into the room, you have to wait for them to do all of those things on that person, and then they're going to do it to you. So it can take anywhere between one to three minutes to get back into the room on top of whatever it is you're doing on your breaks. So on my first day, I almost ran out of break time because I didn't consider that. And so I had 45 minutes of break time and I actually went 30 seconds over all of my break time uh, because to get back into the room took way longer than I thought it would. And then I was 30 seconds out. And so all that to say, remember that. And then the only thing I will tell you is that the best way to prep for all of this, I have a separate video. For the day one, I would highly recommend USMLE um, UWorld. And then the second day, I would recommend the CCS cases. The other thing that you will need to remember is that on test day, when you walk into the testing site, you will need your scheduling permit as well as an ID. An ID can be a government issued passport, it can be um, a driver's license, but you will also need this other scheduling permit. And the reason you need the scheduling permit is that it has your CIN number. The CIN number is needed to log into your computer every time you go to your computer. So if you go to your computer and you don't have your CIN number, you're, you're out of luck. You can't even log in. And the CIN number, they're going to make you write it down on the little two sheets of whiteboard paper they give you. And you're going to write down your CIN number. And that number is something that you don't want to lose because if you don't have it, you're going to have to spend your break time getting it again. Um, and when you spend your break time, you're losing valuable time. And that's also another thing I will mention. Whenever you go into the testing room, they're going to give you two sheets of this um, erasable whiteboard marker paper. And I highly recommend you use those to your advantage. Always have your CIN number written on both papers, back and front. So that way, if one of the CIN numbers gets erased, you have it somewhere else. Because if you lose your CIN number, if you type it in incorrectly, you're going to be locked out and you need to make sure you have that number appropriately because you do need it every time you leave your computer and you log back in. All right, and last but not least, remember that this is a two-day exam. I highly recommend you do not schedule it back to back, primarily because it's exhausting. You have seven hours the first day and the second day you have like 10 hours. That's 17 hours of testing within a 48 hour window if you scheduled it back to back. I recommend giving yourself at least one day in the middle to readjust your sleep schedule. And also more importantly, um, if you haven't done any of the CCS cases, some people will spend the entire like time studying multiple choice and then give themselves a week in between the first day and the second day. So that way they can study up on the CCS cases, which I think is totally fine. But the, by giving yourself a break, you can actually pivot out of multiple choice mode and into CCS mode. So all that to say, I hope 
you understand the type of things that goes into step three test day, this is exactly what you should expect. Remember that this is a long test. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And by having snacks, by making sure you understand how much break time you have, by making sure you know your CIN number is written on each of your sheets of paper, you're going to be saving yourself things that could have totally destroyed your test. And now you're going to be like ready for them. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did drop a like, comment, share, subscribe means the world to me. And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.